Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to kind of hook back up where I was last Sunday. So if you weren't here last Sunday, um, you can get the CD. I'll give you a little refresher today. But, but um, I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm throwing out a challenge to, to you today. And I, I believe the whole body of Christ. And, and you know, <laughs> um, we need to step up. And we need to step up into our God-given authority. We need to realize that we live in a different place. I, I'm amazed at how many Christians that I've talked to and I've listened to, and, and they, oh, what are we going to do? Oh, my goodness. So, you know, the government this, the government that. Hey, listen to me. God has worked mightily in oppressive governments far greater than what we have. Do I want that? No. I believe God raised this nation up for a purpose. But I tell you, we've got to keep our focus. And we've got to focus ourselves on what God says, what God wants, and how God wants to work in our lives. And, and that's you. You know, when I say the body of Christ, I'm not pointing my finger outside these doors. I'm pointing my finger at you. At me. Amen. Because we've got to understand how we should live our lives. And, and I tell you, the Lord just gave me a mandate. Just And, and uh, you know, I'll preach this other places, and I'm going to be preaching this next week uh, in Tulsa, and I'm going to preach it there. And, and uh, I preached it a little bit on TV the other day. They wouldn't let me preach very long. But how many of you saw me on Daystar the other day? My goodness. You send an offering? Oh, no, I just, I didn't get it. You buy the book? You probably already had it. But anyway, um, I, I, I feel like the Lord's just speaking some things. And, and to be honest with you, and it's almost foolish to say this, really, that we've got to get back to some basics. But it's foolish to say that, really, when we should never leave that. But, you know, you can get so caught up in how to deal with your laundry in faith. You know, or... How, you know, how to get your mind in a better place. and Well, look, all those things are good, but let me tell you something. That's going to be worthless if you don't have some solid foundation of who you are and what God says about you. You know, you can kind of have all kinds of, you know, how-tos, and I've got a lot of them that I've preached over the years. But, but the thing that you need to realize is there are some things that you have to understand, and you have to understand who you are on the earth. And so the Lord gave me this out of, um, out of 2 Kings where Elijah is a prophet of God. He's a powerful man and comes out of nowhere and he's, you know, he has all kinds of miracles and, and um, he has a servant and his servant's name is Elisha. And for a preacher, that's hard to keep them apart, you know, Elijah and Elisha. But, but I'm going to endeavor to do that today. But, so Elijah, Elisha is serving Elijah. And he sees all the things that he's done uh, in his life and in his ministry. And something happens. He knows, Elisha knows, Elijah is about to leave. And so Elisha... Just won't leave Elijah alone. And finally, Elijah said to him, what do you want? He said, he said, <laughs> I like this. He said in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 9, he said, I want a double portion of your spirit upon me. I want what you've got double. So Elijah said, all right, well, if you see me when I leave, you can have that. Now, during this whole conversation, they, they're walking. And they come to the Jordan River. Elijah takes off his, his coat. He rolls it up, and he strikes the Jordan. And when he does, the river parts on both sides. And they walk, out, they walk across on dry land. Not very long after that, all of a sudden, out of heaven, comes a chariot of fire. 
And that chariot comes sweeping down to the earth. It separates Elijah and Elisha. And Elijah steps on that chariot. And all of a sudden it takes off. And there floating down to the ground was the mantle that Elijah used to strike the water. It represented his anointing. So Elijah gets the the, the, the a mantle, and, and he doesn't understand at that time exactly what it meant, but he rolled it up just like Elijah did, just the same way. He walks back to that same river, and he strikes that river. And in verse 14 of 2 Kings, he says, Where is the God of Elijah? And when he struck that river, the same thing happened. The waters parted, and he walked back across on dry, dry ground. You say, well, Pastor, what's that got to do with me? It has a lot to do with you. First of all, you need to understand and realize that this is really, with Jesus, a type of you and uh, of Jesus and the body of Christ. Do you know the Bible says he, got, he did, uh, that he asked for a double portion and that Elisha did exactly twice as many miracles? What if he'd asked for a triple portion? I mean, a double probably was just amazing. But So it says he did twice as many miracles. You say, well, what's that got to do with me? But it has a lot to do with you. John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said, I say to you, he who believes in me, how many believers we got here today? Oh, that's talking about you. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. All right, you ready for this? And greater works than these will he do because I go to my Father. Now, that is a profound statement. And most of you are sitting there saying, I've never seen it happen. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen. I believe, listen to me, I believe that Jesus wants us to do more than what he did. We may not do it individually, but collectively, we can blow it out of the water. If we'll just allow God to work in our lives and use us, we can, it's amazing what we could do. You know Jesus did all he did in three years. The Bible says he did so much that you couldn't even write all the things down in books. Well, you know you could if you chronicled every minute, but, but the point is it was a lot. But yet Jesus said, no, no, no. If you believe in me, you're going to do bigger things. You're going to do greater things. No, there's coming a double portion on the body of Christ. There's coming power and authority on you to do works just like I did them, except you're going to do more because it's going to be more of you. It's not going to be just the head. It's going to be the whole body doing it. And then he gave us one of the keys, one of the mantles, if you want to call it that, 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 he, that he gave us. And he said this in the next verse. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Whew, that's pretty strong. So Jesus, the first thing that Jesus did when he went for, was raised up was he dropped the mantle of his name. The name that is above every name. He gave us that name. And he said, I'm giving you this name, and you can use it just as though I was there, and you speak that name. Peter said this. He said, Jesus' name and faith in that name. And you use that name as your mantle, just as though I was standing there. Isn't that amazing? But listen, that's not all he did. 
Jesus also gave us the mantle that he wore. Huh? Yeah, he gave us the same power he had. See, people misunderstand something about Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, now listen to this, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Or he anointed him. He wasn't born anointed. Y'all still here? He was born, yes. He was the Son of God. He was made flesh. But that wasn't his mantle. That's not where his power was. He had to be anointed. Well, how did he be anointed? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, listen to this, with the Holy Spirit and power. He anointed him with the Holy Spirit. He gave him the Holy Spirit for a power source. That was what Jesus walked in. Well, what was his purpose? He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. See, I, I like the way this scripture sets up. It says how God anointed Jesus, the Son of God. No. It said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He anointed a man. Perfect man? Yes. Without sin? Yes. But the Bible tells me he laid down all of his godly attributes all of his kingly authority to become a man. So God had to anoint him as a man. Well, what did he give him? He gave him the Holy Spirit. He gave him the Holy Spirit. The Bible says over in, in Luke chapter 3, verse 21, that Jesus came and was baptized by John. And when he was baptized by John, the Bible says the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. He was anointed. The mantle from heaven came upon him, the Holy Spirit, and fell on him. God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. For what purpose? So he could go around and do good and heal all those who were oppressed of the devil. Then Jesus opens up the book of Isaiah, reads it in the synagogue, and it says and it, and it says that when he began to read that and declare his ministry, it's, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. You got it? To preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty those who are oppressed. Whoo! What a mantle. The Holy Spirit fell on him, came on him. Let me, say, let me show you just a few of the little results of that, just so you'll get it. In that same chapter, Luke chapter 4, verse 33, it says in, uh, there, in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. He cried out with a loud voice and said, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus said, Be quiet. I don't like be quiet. I think he really said, Shut up. <laughs> Shut up and come out of him. Listen to me today, folks. Don't kid yourself into thinking that demon spirits are just kind of somewhere else. They're everywhere. And they influence. And you better be ready to deal with them. Quit trying to figure out how to get around something, how to explain something, and just stand up and say, shut up and leave. How can you do that? Well, I'm going to show you because you have the same mantle. Well, but Jesus said that. Yeah, but you have his name. Hallelujah. Right after that, Jesus comes into Peter's house and his mother-in-law was sick with a fever. 
You know what Jesus did? He just rebuked the fever. I can't tell you as a dad how many times I've stood over my children and rebuked fevers. Well, you know, actually the doctors say that a fever is good because it helps. Oh, shut up. Rebuke it. You rebuke the fever, you'll rebuke what caused it. I'm sorry, I don't want to be ugly today. <laughs> but really, I mean, so we try to, we, let's get down to the bottom line here. There are demons and there are sickness, and we have power and authority. We've got a mantle. You have a mantle. It's not just a few select people. Now, I understand that Jesus had the Holy Spirit without measure. That's what it says in John chapter 3, verse 33. He had the Spirit of God without measure. That's because he didn't have sin in his life. He didn't have a corrupt body. He was perfect. He could handle something you and I can't really handle fully. But that does not exclude us from having his mantle. What did Jesus operate in? He operated in the Holy Spirit and in power. Well, I don't want to offend anybody. Then you'll never operate in the things God wants you to do. I'm telling you. Because I am guarantee you the devil will make sure that it looks offensive. Well, but you know the government, they're going, we're not going to be able to use the name of Jesus. Then I'm going to heaven. Because if I can't use the name of Jesus, I'm powerless. And so are you. Now, I'm not talking about being foolish and getting in somebody's face and going, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> but I'm telling you, when I'm faced with adversity, when I'm faced with difficulty, when I'm faced with a demon, I'm going to use that name because it's above every name. And the power of the Holy Spirit will flow out and that name will conquer. You have to understand that. You have to know that. Now, I'm going to show you a principle today so you can grab this and understand this, okay? Over in Mark chapter 5, verse 25, the Bible tells us that there was a woman who had a flow of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and was nothing better but grew worse. But when she heard, I like that, about Jesus, she came in the press the, the, the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately the fountain of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Now here's what I want you to see. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Power flowed out of Jesus. Jesus wasn't playing games with this woman. He, he didn't see her. Say, I'm gonna, let me see if she can touch me. I'm going to move a little further away. I'm going to really test her faith here, see if she'll touch me. He didn't even know it until the power flowed out. Why? Now, I know this is going to sound a little strange to you, but listen. Because the power was independent of Jesus. It was just on him and in him. But it was the Holy Spirit. So, he was conscious of the Holy Spirit, perfectly conscious of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit released his power, Jesus knew it immediately. Why? He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. It flowed out of him. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Totally healed. By what? By the power of God. Here's one of my favorites, Luke chapter 5, verse 17. It says, It happened on a certain day as Jesus was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Now listen to this statement. This is the most amazing statement. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Them. It was there. It was present. For what purpose? To heal them. But isn't it interesting? The only one that got healed 
was one guy that some friends tore the roof off the ceiling and dropped Jesus down in the midst, and Jesus healed him. You know what Jesus did? It's amazing. Jesus healed him. He said, you need to leave now. You don't want to stay around this bunch. Now, I'm, I, I know I'm adding that, but you don't want to stay around this bunch because they're not getting anything. They, all they want to do is argue the, argue the Bible. They're not getting anything. They're trying to argue that miracles have passed away. Uh, you need to leave before you, they talk you into your infirmity coming back on you. Don't, don't, don't stay here. They all could have been healed. The power was there. But not one of them got healed. But one did. One did. The amazing thing about the power of God is we try to judge it on perfection. The Bible says Jesus himself could do no mighty works in his own hometown because of their unbelief. There will never be perfection in what we do, folks. There'll never be per- Well, I used the name of Jesus. Well, I prayed and then nothing happened. Listen to me. Don't ever let the enemy stop you from standing and speaking the name of Jesus and expecting the Holy Spirit to work in your life just because something didn't seem to work the way you wanted. You're not perfect. Even Jesus could not get people healed because of their unbelief. You get around a bunch of, you, you can't argue somebody into healing. You can't do it. You can't argue somebody into, into receiving anything. If you don't have a passion or desire to receive, you're not going to receive. Well, I'll just see if it works. Well, that might, once in a while, God will just do that just to say I did it. But listen to me. That's not the way the Lord wants to work in our lives. But he wants to do good. He wants to heal all those who are oppressed of the devil. That's what he did on the earth. Now I'm going to show you something. Over in Luke chapter 13, verse 11, it says, There was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And immediately he laid hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Of course, the rulers didn't want to argue religion with him. You did that on the Sabbath. Don't you know that's not the right thing to do? Blah, 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 blah. Jesus said in verse 16, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed, be released, because Satan has bound her, and did she be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? He went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. And religion always wants to argue. Always wants to argue. Well, I just don't believe that. Well, here's what I think. You know, I mean, I know people, they've written books against speaking in tongues. Well, it's too late. I didn't read them before I got filled and started speaking. (laughs) I'm so glad. Well, people have written books. Well, you know, the day of healing and miracles has passed away. Well, it's too late. I've been healed too many times. I have found another book that wrote about it. It's called the Bible. Now, here's the thing you've got to see. Because if you're not careful, you can segment Jesus and say, that was Jesus. And please don't misunderstand me. I understand the capability difference between us and Jesus. Okay, Don't misunderstand me. I understand that. But you can't misjudge your own ability trying to measure up to Jesus. You just need to know what he had he wants to give to you. All right, now listen, there's a scripture I want you to read. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. I want to put it up on the screen. They're going to put it up there. I want you to listen to this. What does it say? Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, you have the mantle of his name. You have the same power he walked in. And the third thing is, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. 
What does that mean, Pastor? It means what he did, he does, and he will do. What he did when he walked on the earth, he still does. And what he does, he will continue to do. All the divine attributes and qualities are still available for humanity. It would be heartbreaking if we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and we couldn't partake of it. That it was just a story to tell us about Jesus. It would be heartbreaking. But see, Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. The same qualities are available today. Jesus, do you remember what we read over in John 14? Jesus said, I will do it. I will do it. He's the same. He, he, there's no difference. Jesus made another amazing statement in John 14, verse 6. He said, I'm going to send you another helper. The Holy Spirit. The word there, another, literally means one of exact duplication. I'm going to send you somebody just like me who's going to express me by his power in your life. And if you use him and you use my name, you're going to do greater works. Now let's look at this a minute. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Jesus said this. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Now listen. These signs will follow those who believe. Who? Those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents if they drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. How do we lay hands on the sick? In His name. All right, you got it? But now you got to keep reading. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, He was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Now I could go over to Acts chapter uh, 2 and tell you that, that when he sat down, he sent back the Holy Spirit. He sent back the mantle, the anointing. And it says, listen, he sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere. Now listen, the Lord working with them, confirming the word through accompanying signs. Signs. What signs? These signs that follow them. You have to understand that, that on you as a believer, there is an anointing. There is a mantle of the Holy Spirit sent from Jesus. And not only that, you have His authority to recreate Him on the earth. You use His name, Jesus said, I'll do it. He doesn't have to be here. All you have to do is use His name. Now, I'm not talking about playing silly with it. Peter said, Jesus' name and faith in that name has made, that, made the man whole. But when you understand the power and the impact of having a Holy Spirit, and then you have the name of Jesus for your life, all of a sudden, you have a mantle. And you're not, too many people go around looking for that anointed one. Oh, i got to find somebody that's anointed. Oh, I heard there was a preacher. I know, I know people have traveled all the way to Africa because they heard there was a preacher over there that was healing people. Probably was. But that same anointing's here. Now, I'm not bragging. That's, I, that's just a fact. The power of the Lord is present to heal today. The name of Jesus is the authority to release that power. 
It's, it belongs to all of us if you're a believer. All you've got to do is understand, hey, that's my core. That's my core belief. I have something Jesus had. Now, let me just show you this in practical terms. We looked at this last week at Acts chapter 4, beginning in verse 29. Peter and John had gotten in trouble in Acts chapter 3 for using the name of Jesus. They healed a lame man using the name. And everybody got upset about it. All the religious people, they got upset. They brought Peter and John and said, look, you got to stop this. You can preach all you want, but just don't use that name. And then the Bible says they sent them back to their own company. And so when they came back and they told everybody what had just happened, they said, let's pray. Now, Lord, verse 29 of Acts chapter 4. Now, Lord, look on their threats. Hide us in the cleft of the rock where no one can see us and we can make it through to the end. You know, that's not what they said. In the midst of all the threats against their lives and against what they believed and against everything, they said, Lord, give us your servants boldness that we may speak your word stretch out your hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus Lord we want boldness we want to be able to throw that mantle down and say where is the God of Jesus where are the signs and wonders? Give us boldness to declare God's power. Amazingly, when they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they did exactly that. They spoke the word with boldness. What happens when you speak the word with boldness? Go back to, to, to Mark chapter 16. The Lord starts working with you. With what? Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Miracles. God starts working. Why? Because you're walking in that mantle. Somewhere, church, listen to me, somewhere you're going to have to make up your mind that you're going to rise up in your authority and that you're not going to let the devil run over you you're not going to let the devil run over your family. You're not going to give up when the doctors say give up. You're going to keep believing, keep expecting, and let God work in your life. And don't back off. Don't back down. And every time something happens, you just get up and say, I rebuke you, devil. You're not going to do this in the name of Jesus. Well, you don't need to talk to the devil. Well, Jesus talked to the devil all the time. He told him exactly where to go. By the way, let me just tell you, the devil never goes to hell. So don't tell him to go to hell. He actually gets thrown in the lake of fire. He is tied up and chained up. But, but let me listen to me. Don't say foolish things. Don't say foolish things about the devil. Do you know the Bible says that Michael the archangel didn't even say bad things about the devil? You don't go around calling him goofy names. and You better respect him for the fact that he, he, he can do things, but at the same time he has no power over you. But you can't play around with it or you'll give him authority over you. You speak the name of Jesus. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. You say, well, I don't feel the Holy Spirit. Well, stir him up. He's in there. The Bible says over in Jude chapter 20, uh, Jude verse 20, stir up your holy faith, praying in the Spirit. Stir yourself up, man. I'll tell you, he's in there. He's ready to work. You've got the mantle of the Holy Spirit. You've got the authority of the name of Jesus for your life. And it's time to challenge the enemy in your life, in your family's life. Instead of always complaining about what's going on in America, start praying. 
Start rebuking those demon spirits that try to take authority over the land. You'd be amazed at what happens. You do know this is spiritual in nature. You, the name of Jesus on your lips means something when the power of the Holy Spirit's behind it, when you're not just playing games with it. Lord, give us boldness to throw down that mantle. Where is the God of Jesus? Signs and wonders. Power of the Holy Spirit.